Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! That's oldtimeradiodvd.com. Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol is brought to you by the delicious bite sized checkerboard cereals. Wheat checks, rice checks. I have nothing left. Nothing. Oh, please, Commander. Please help me. Mrs. Gordon, you're not going to be evicted from your home. It's yours, that's going to stay yours. That's a promise. And when Commander Corey makes a promise, it's as good as done. Thank you, Commander. Stand by for exciting action on The Giants of Pluto Number 3 in just one moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. Hey, Sparkly! Will you give me a hand with my practicing? Well, sure, but what are you practicing? Peering through my Space Patrol periscope, right over the heads of tall people like you. There's going to be a big parade today, and I don't want to miss any of it. Ah, uh, okay, Space Patroller. Start your peering. Can you see everything? Just as clear as day. Well, sure. That's because it's so high and wide. 24 inches high and tapered special for wide angle vision. And look, this mirror here and this one down here are the eyes that work magic. Why, you can see around corners, over fences, but nobody can see you. And it comes in plenty handy when you're watching a parade, Space Patrollers, or playing hide and seek with your pals, or or hunting for secret hiding places of your very own. And man, oh man, those neat colors. Red, yellow, and blue. And say, a special identification chart of outer space citizens. Boy, isn't that a beauty? This is your Space Patrol Periscope. And you'll really have fun when you get one, so why don't you send for yours today? Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol. Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents and a rice checks or wheat checks box top. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite-sized checks taste good to me. Bite-sized checks, wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. <laughs> At the outer perimeter of the solar system, defined by the orbit of Pluto, is a satellite known as Pluto Number 3. Despite its millions of miles from the warmth of the sun, Pluto Number 3 is a lush green body with an abundance of breathable atmosphere. Unlike its sister moons and even Pluto itself, Pluto 3 is warmed to a comfortable temperature by inner volcanic action whose conductive heat has thawed glaciers to flow freely into streams and lakes, bringing to life a velvet green coat of foliage. It is here on Pluto III that Dr. Frederick Kurt has chosen a site to erect the Kurt Sanitarium, and it is here at the edge of the rest home grounds that a space patrol battle cruiser has landed its lone passenger, a passenger who at this very moment walks briskly down the corridor inside the building Toward the office of Dr. Kurt. <clears throat> Won't you come in? I'm already in. So I noticed. Dr. Kurt? Yes. Dr. Frederick Kurt, owner and operator of the Kurt Sanitarium? Yes. Major Robertson, Space Patrol. Oh, I recognize your uniform. And to what do I owe the pleasure, Major? 
I'm afraid you won't call it a pleasure when you know that I'm here to take you to Space Patrol headquarters for questioning. Questioning? About what? Charges of influencing your patients. Forcing them to give you money and property. And just how am I supposed to be influencing my patients? That's what we hope to find out from you when we get back to Terra. I see. Tell me, Major Robinson, what happens if I object to leaving my sanatorium? Then I'll have to take you by force. I have a warrant. <laughs> that won't be necessary, I'm sure, Major. A man of your size would have no trouble to take a man of my stature, with or without warrant. Then you'll go peaceably. But of course, Major Robertson. I'm only too glad to accompany you to Terra. Good. Then let's get started. Who's he? This is my friend Atlas. I soon named him because he reminds me of the Atlas in mythology, who carried the world on his shoulders. That's very interesting. Well, let's get going. Look, Kurt. What does your muscle man want? <laughs> I think you, Major Robertson. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't like you. Feelings mutual. <laughs> I have a feeling he is not going to let you take me out of this room. Then you'd better get another feeling. Because you're leaving with me. And at this very same moment, back on Terra, in the central office at Space Patrol headquarters, Buzz Corey and his cadet Happy have just learned some disturbing information. Smoking rockets, Commander. How does this, this Dr. Kurt get away with it anyway? Less than a week after Mr. Gordon enters his sanitarium, he, well, he signs over everything he owns to Dr. Kurt. Then, then he refuses to contact his wife and, well, now this eviction notice they served on Mrs. Gordon. Please, Commander Court, you must find out what they've done with my husband. Chris was forced to sign those papers. I'm sure he was, Mrs. Gordon. I have nothing left, nothing. Oh, please, Commander, please help me. Try not to worry, Mrs. Gordon. I know it isn't easy under the circumstances, but believe me, we're doing everything we can to put a stop to this sort of thing. Oh, well, sure. Uh, Major Robertson has already gone to Pluto III to bring Dr. Kurt back here for questioning. You go on home. It's still your home to the end of the week. I promise I'll get in touch with you the instant I learn anything about your husband. Perhaps that she gets home. Yes, sir. Oh, and Mrs. Gordon, you're not going to be evicted from your home. It's yours, and it's going to stay yours. That's a promise. And when Commander Corey makes a promise, it's as good as done. Commander Corey calling Major Robertson aboard Space Patrol ship 2X3. Commander Corey to SP2X3. Come in. Commander Corey, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra, calling Kurt Sanitarium, Pluto 3. Major Robertson of the Space Patrol. Oh, I know Commander Corey. I don't believe I have had the pleasure of meeting him. You mean he never arrived on Pluto 3? As I told you, Major, no, I never met him. Very well, Dr. Kurt, I won't trouble you any further. Corey out. Atlas, take our new patients to the converter room. I think he will make a fine addition to my corps, Giants of Pluto III. A few moments later, at the huge interplanetary spaceport on Terra, Dr. Kurt was lying about Major Robertson. Yes, I do. Is that why you didn't ask him anything about Mrs. Gordon's husband? That's right. He would have lied about that, too. Stand by to fire rockets. Standing by, sir. Fire rockets. There leaps upward. Soon it breaks gravity, whisks through the thin upper atmosphere, and is space-born, thrusting forth tons of energy. The huge rocket engines drive the space patrol ship deeper into space, closing the gap between Terra and Pluto III. Later, 
At the journey's end, the Terra 5 lands quietly on repeller ray and comes to rest, hidden among the trees that surround the sanitarium. Did you notice Major Robertson's ship while we were landing, sir? Yes, and it's strange, too. And why do you say that, sir? Well, I'm sure Robbie was here when I talked to Dr. Kurt in the space of phone, and that he lied about it. Yet, he leaves Robbie's ship in plain sight. Yeah, that is fun. Come on. Pretty close to the edge of the grounds, Commander. Pretty soon we'll be out in plain sight where they can see us. We'll just have to let them see us. Well, here, have to take a good look at this so you can recognize him if you see him. Who is it? It's Chris Gordon. His wife gave us this for the files when she first registered a complaint against Dr. Kurt. Mm. Well, I'll remember his face, sir. And we've got to find him, Hap. Remember, we made a promise to Mrs. Gordon. Gee, Mr. Gordon sure doesn't look like the kind of a man who... who... Oh, hi. We were just looking at your picture. And I... <laughs> Mr. Gordon. <sighs> Smoking rockets, and we thought he was going to be hard to find. Are you all right, sir? <laughs> Hey, what's the big idea? You... Oh! Uh. Yeah, but it looks like Mrs. Gordon was right. Smoking rockets, Commander, did you feel the strength of that guy? And Mrs. Gordon said he was weak and run down. Well, he's a giant now. Pat, look out. Oh, no, you don't. Not again. No, Pat, don't shoot him. Hey. What? Gang, take it with you when you go to the football game. I'm talking about your neat new Space Patrol periscope. You won't miss a play. You won't have to crane your neck either to see those extra point kicks go flying over the goalpost because the periscope will do that work for you. That's right. This is your Space Patrol periscope, 24 inches high and tapered for wide angle vision. And can you ever have fun with one? Use it around your house for spying out those extra packages of rice checks and wheat checks on the top pantry shelf. And for peering at people, you can see them around corners, over fences, around trees and over bushes, but they can't see you. That's the periscope mirror eye. It works like magic. Here it is, a mirror on top and one on the bottom. And when you play her out in space, don't forget this special identification chart. Shows you what the citizens you might meet on all the major planets might look like. And right on top, there's a place for your name, address, and solar system. So space patrollers, how about it? Why don't you get your own name on a swell new space patrol periscope? Send for yours today. Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. Offer good only in USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents and a rice checks or wheat checks box top. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite-sized checks taste good to me. Bite-sized checks. Wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now, back to Space Patrol! Now, Major Robinson, now your time has come to join my core giants. Wow. Smoking rockets, Commander. After he clobbered you, I shot him with a ray gun and it didn't even slow him down. It's almost like a giant. 
Mrs. Gordon didn't say anything about her husband being that strong. He wasn't until he entered Dr. Kurt's sanitarium. Kurt's doing something to his victims to alter their size and strength. And their minds, too. Sure, that must be it. And that's how he gets them to, to sign over everything they own to him. Come on. Hey, and Commander, that's not all. Major Robertson's going to be one of those giants, too. Bend this. Major Robertson is no more. Hercules, why have you come here? Why have you left your guard post? Already? They have come looking for him already. Go, Thor. Go. Let them find you. Bring them here. My core of giants grows more rapidly than I expected. Did he see you? I don't think so, sir. At least he didn't act like he saw me. I have to be careful. There'll probably be a lot more of them all over this building. Hey! They laughed at me once, Commander. The entire Council of Scientists sneered at my theory. When I told them that I, Dr. Frederick Kurt, had developed a method to transform a weakling into a perfect human specimen, strong and tall. They ridiculed me, saying that my motives were selfish, that I was only interested in making myself as big as other men. Why didn't you use this method on yourself? Unfortunately, Commander, my first tests proved that I would lose more than I would gain. You see, my energy converter increases the physical powers by multiplying the physical energy of the body. And it gets the additional energy from the mind. You mean you convert mental energy into physical energy? Exactly. And so I concluded I would rather be a genius than a giant. Well, now I get it. So now you use this thing to, uh, to weaken the minds of your victims, and that's how you get them to turn over all their property to you. They are completely subservient to me, but their body possess the strength of many men. 
so powerful that their nerve centers are not even affected by paralyzer ray guns. Yeah, we found that out. Surely you don't expect to get away with this, Kurt. Why not? How can I be defeated? Not even the force of space patrol ships would dare to fire on this building for fear of destroying my giants. The men you would be trying to save. Say, he's got a good point there, Commander. And as you have seen for yourselves, it's useless for individuals to try to defeat me because the very men you have come to rescue have defeated you. Like these two, Hercules and Thor. Hercules and Thor? Well, what are you talking about? That's Major Robertson and uh, Mr. Gordon. Not anymore. They have been renamed for the most powerful men in mythology. Hercules, Thor, Atlas, Colossus, Ulysses. What about Achilles? Surely you haven't forgotten Achilles, Kurt. Yes. The ideal of youth, strength, and valor. But Achilles was vulnerable. An arrow pierced his heel, and he was destroyed. Exactly, Kurt. You too have an Achilles heel. You are your own weak point. Hercules, Thor, help! Hey, Hercules, Thor, make help! Him, make him let go of the commander! Uh, Tell him to stop now! Hercules, Thor, stop! Dr. Kurt, this energy converter, will it... Will restore these men to normal? Will it? Yes. Then do it. Order the men of the converter. Major Robertson first. I'm not fooling with you, Kurt. Unless you'd like to try the energy converter yourself. No! Then do what I say, and right now. Thor. Go to the table. Lie down on the table. All set, sir. All right, Kurt. You know what to do, do it. Half an hour, keep Kurt with us. Yes, sir. As soon as we get Kurt safe at a we'll come back here and make sure all the other victims are restored to normal. Now, remember, the important thing is to blast off and get to Terra, not to try to defeat the very men we're trying to save. And this is going to be your Achilles heel, Commander. Atlas! Atlas, help! Atlas! <laughs> on the double, everybody. We get back to the ship. Come on, out this way. Get ready to blast off as soon as we get aboard. We're practically on our way, sir. Commander, my ship's that way. See you on Terra, Robbie. Right, sir. All right, Kurt, up the ladder. Hey! Achilles! Help me! Achilles and off! Achilles and off! Kurt! I'm sorry, Tony. You're never going to catch me now. Maybe not this time, but I'll be back. Here we go, sir!
kept your promise, Commander Corey. Thank you. What did I tell you? When Commander Corey makes a promise, it's as good as done. I'll make another promise. Going to Pluto III and get Dr. Kurt. Well, Commander, if it's all right with you, uh, I'd like to help you keep that promise, too. Well, no, I, I was counting on that, huh? <laughs> you know, Commander, I was pretty shrewd pulling that Achilles heel on Kurt. Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> I uh, heard it was the Commander's idea. Hmm? Oh, 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 well, 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 yes. Uh, uh, I guess it was. Uh, the Commander thought of the Achilles part, but... Uh, but what? Well, uh... I knew he was a heel all the time. Ha! <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I was going to... Oh. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, and famous... Nestle's Chocolate Bars. Well, Space Patrollers, another adventure almost ended. I say almost because we always top it off with a finishing touch. A good hot cup of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. Man, this is one wonderful tasting hot drink. Nestle's Cocoa is a sensational bodybuilder because it's packed with whole milk and pure sugar. And now, Watch how easily you can make your cup of Nestle's cocoa. Just put one, two, three spoonfuls in your cup. Add hot water. Stir. And there it is. Mm, and what flavor? Rich, full-bodied chocolate the way only famous Nestle's can make it. You want to get the Space Patrol habit, fellas and girls. Start drinking Nestle's cocoa today. Ask Mom to bring home the big red and yellow can of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. And remember... N-E-S-T-L-E-S Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. <laughs> Now, a scene from next week's exciting action, The Fiery Pit of Pluto Number 3. Yep. Huh? Yep, you were right, we're locked in. Oh, smoke and rockets, Commander. These walls, that door, they're so thick we can never break them down. And this heat in here, it's, it's getting terrible. It'll, it'll get us before long. That is, if the poison gas doesn't get us first. Hey, hey, Commander. Commander, where are you going? Commander! Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy, in their attempt to save the victims of Dr. Kurt, are confronted with the dangers of the fiery pit of Pluto number three, next week on Space Patrol. That's oldtimeradiodvd.com.